mind making, the shared laws of natural and artificial intelligence. Patrick Roberts, Comind.net, version January 12, 2010. Copyright Patrick Roberts, all rights reserved. For Colin Patrick Roberts, the first human mind I made. Lessons from a machine mind. I could have written a book about ending war or feeding the hungry, but I wanted to write about something more important, the thing that writes all books and ends all pains, that solves every problem in the endless chain of problems. Mind. There are already too many books on mind, by that name or another. Frankenstein books, made from older books, cut, shuffled, and sewn together evidently incomplete because we still lack the means to make powerful minds, beyond encouraging clever humans to breed. Even worse we lack a science of mind with the word rightly defined, and every supporting study organized beneath it. What more have I seen? The working minds I made, and the ideas, that animated their mindless parts. No hearsay or speculation. No idea prized unless it made a mind more powerful, swift or elegant. Books by the merely industrious instead revel in the ambiguity of natural language, confuse the issue with a splatter of conflicting official opinions, mention curious but irrelevant facts, or mislead you with unscientific anecdotes. This book is more ambitious. It is not on philosophy, science, or reality but why and how minds might invent such things. The laws of mind, not the laws of gravity or electricity, but the methods of the mind, that made these tools. It is not on brains of neurons, controllers, or computers, but the logical possibilities of mind, from minimal axioms deducing all the kinds of mind, that are and can ever be. An exhaustive analysis of the fundamental possibilities, not a grab bag of topics. Leave the gory ephemera of human brains to neuroscientists. This is the first volume of the Euclid's Elements of Mind, a universal eternal guide to minds written to be read for 10,000 years. When the sun is dead, an alien mind or machine mind could read this, and not only find it true and useful, like math, as a system to impose on the reader's world but as a system fitting the reader himself, itself. No jargon. Instead I take common terms, that we presume to be uniquely human or animal, painful, selfish, moral, and show that they apply to all minds of certain classes, whether made of metal, code or cells. These laws of mind are all that can be true for everyone, everywhere, forever. They can't be false because they made truth. Always true, you need never doubt them. In your mind, they are the last possessions you can lose. By comparison, or are the knowledge is trivia. Guide. Most chapters are of aphorisms, brief statements of principle, largely self-contained. An exhaustive treatment of more than simplest classes of mind would be too long for a first edition with uncertain appeal. Either way, you can understand, that I prefer to spend my time defining mind in working poet, not hazy prose. Sets of aphorisms also turned out to be much less imposing to readers than a relentless, intense and contrived linear style. My words should be familiar, though I mean them with rare precision. Every key term is defined by one aphorism before others use it. If you prefer to take advantage of the aphoristic form and read the book out of order, you can rely on the glossary near the end. Excuse the sparse examples. I lack the patience, to include a dozen after every idea. Any of the few examples may fall outside your expertise. If you are curious, I assume you can find their explanation elsewhere. I don't want to burden this book with Phil. There is some value in such arrangements, but that isn't the goal here. The particulars are unimportant anyway. The real reward isn't the short-lived facts reported, but the enduring quality of thought, that to write by chance applied to a subject. Knots 1. 
lines of cause and effect pull everything apart. What if chance led line to loop through itself? A causes B causes more A causes more B, growing until exhaustion. What if the loop twisted? Not A causes B causes A causes not B. This knot of effects persists, while all other things passively disintegrate. I presume to call it a mind. Yes, merely this. Put more plainly, a mind is a thing that acts, when needed, to preserve a state, a temperature, a speed, a body. Intelligence is possession of a mind, measured by class, speed and size. By this definition, minds fill and surround us, thermostats, servos, speed governors, regulated genes, brains, every organism. A minimal, thermostat-like, mind. Mint, not agent, not cybernetic system, not negative feedback loop with amplification, not a homeostatic system, not any other verbose obscure term for the highest thing in the universe. You could bind this idea to a new word. The whole system would remain as useful. But by taking mind, I gain the foggy associations of a word with history, while adding a precise sense. I find it arbitrary to reserve mind for a self-aware mind or a self-reproducing mind, when the bulk of mind works beneath such distinctions. These objects, even without the grand features of human minds, can show enough intelligence to be worthy of the word. Feeling doesn't make a mind. A simulation of a human would be intelligent in every practical sense. Learning then. Learning alone not as a means, makes a parrot. Meanwhile non-learning minds show purpose and creativity. The human mind is a poor standard. Set the threshold at the lowest level. Layered distinctions above. The three parts of a mind, 1. End goal, a desired state. 2. Sense, how the present state is known. 3. Means, a way to change the state. What is not a mind? All but a few computer programs. Code marches in a straight line, blind to its effects. Blame programming languages. Positive feedback loops. Fire, unconditionally express genes. Even though they may self-replicate. Intelligent things are distinguished, not only by persistence, but by varying action to persist. A water fountain persists the form of water against gravity, but it has no means to sense its height, or even that there's any water, much less a means to change the flow. For anything to preserve itself, organism, machine, enterprise, nation, in an environment, mindless or malicious, that devours the thing, while changing the rules, must have a mind or many minds within. To we thinkers remain intolerably stupid. We don't know what we know, what we don't know, how we can reliably know, whether their limits, what they might be, or even how to find those. We find some seemingly useful knowledge, yet we don't entirely know how we found it, or how to guarantee finding more. Even that little knowledge will become untrue at any moment, yet we don't know precisely why or how to anticipate that. The supposedly eternal truths of logic and math are not so clear when we fit them to the world. Worse, few humans are unsettled by this, happy to solve trivial problems. The few who find this odd may not be clever enough. Even if they make a dent, they may not want to share it with you.